we are at aquariums fishing corals maybe a little touch of reptiles as well we're gonna go inside and see what kind of fish they got in there so, you know since i'm still plotting what i might do fish tank wise i guess we got to look at other people's fish tanks see what they're selling in the area around here in cape coral florida fort myers area let's see what they got they got a nice little fresh water set up here let's see some nice electric blue Akaras. I like those. They just they just shine, man. They have great color. Yeah. Haven't had any of these in my tanks at all. This might be something I might want to add to a first fish tank I get here in Florida. Some jewel cichlids. Come over here. We have the. Oh, my son Logan found the fish tanks. Got some. Jack Dempsey's, regular Jack Dempsey's in there. It's a little cichlid down there. Parrotfish, of course. They always remind me of like 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 the fish that says like something's a little wrong with. They look like a little dumb to me. I don't know. Too much inbreeding, maybe, and cross mutation and hybridization. Let's come up here and see. We got the arowana, my favorite. Silver arowana. I want to either get an albino silver arowana like I had in New York, or if I could ever find a red, a red one, that would be my dream. There's one of my favorites, the Oscars. There's a red Oscar right there. I had two of those that were great. Those are pakus there in the back. We had some of those. We had the albino pakus. We had a giant albino paku, if you remember. So if I ever started up again, I would probably go in an albino. See, that guy looks pretty light. That's not an albino. Down here we have some peacock cichlids. These are brackish water. More brackish water. African cichlids. These are cool, but... You know, they don't really, they all look the same to me. They're, they're, they're bright colors, but they don't really get that big. I like the, the, the ones that kind of grow. Up there we have a, one another, one of my favorites, flower horn. Not quite the big size hump one we had in New York, but it's pretty nice. Definitely a nice looking one. This hump may grow, he's still small. Once again, unfortunately, these, these fish need to really be kept alone when they get bigger because they get very aggressive. But that's a nice flower horn. It's got some nice coloring on it. Some nice tiger barbs, pretty big size. Some tricolor sharks up there. Had a couple of those, they got pretty big. Those are really nice when they grow up. There's, I see some Corbensis. Those are pretty easy to breed. You're looking to breed some egg layers. They tend to have babies pretty easily. These are some nice tiger barbs, very nice color. I haven't seen them that big. Usually when they get big, sometimes they lose their color, but these are, these are really cool looking. There's a nice little planted tank down here. I really never did well with plants for some reason. I don't know, maybe I never created the right environment or the right soil. You have to really get some good nutri nutrients in that uh, deep soil bed, deep foot gravel bed there. I never really got into that because it got very dirty. There's some more planted tanks and there's a nice garami, flame garami right over there. Very pretty. What do you think the gouramis look like, Amanda? Roaches. Do you think they look like roaches? They thought that they did, but they're, they're pretty. Here we have some really cool looking. There's a really nice electric blue Jack Dempsey. Well, he's missing his tail. I guess he's not so good. These things are really mellow when they're young and very timid, unlike other Jack Dempsey's. When they get bigger, they get a little more aggressive. There's a nice German ram in the back. And those those are really, these are dwarf cichlids, these German rams. And they breed pretty easily. I like them, they got a lot of color. It's a really nice fish if you don't want to put something too aggressive and you like cichlids but you don't have enough room. I definitely recommend the rams. Got some red top leading heart tetras there. Whole mixture of textures in there. Some of the painted ones. Over 
here. Discus fish in there. Those are really nice. Those are my favorites. I miss my discus tank. Yeah, you gotta, to me, discus really needs to be kept alone. So you can really feed them right and give them the right conditions and the water. But they're the, they're the, they're the coolest freshwater fish. You know, they, don't, they don't call them the king of the freshwater fish for nothing. Just awesome looking. And these are these are nice. I've seen really cooler ones, but these are pretty. This, this one's got some pretty nice color there. All right, we got some sword tails in here. Obviously, the males with the sword. Females don't have that long sword in the back. So you can tell them apart. Got some albino paradise fish here, which seems like they they should be mellow fish, but a lot of times they get a little aggressive. These things. I've had some problems with them beating up other fish in the past. Got some nice gouramis in there as well. Hi. Some more sword tails and platies. Just come down here. Got some neon tetras in there. For a small fish, man, that's a lot of color. You put a hundred of those in a, in a big tank and, and you're gonna see nothing but that. Looks great, love it. There's some nice garamis in the back. I mean, excuse me, some nice platies in the back. Very, very healthy looking. And then we got some of the algae ears. Clean all the algae off the glass. Got some nice angel fish here. These are kind of like adults. You can mix these with, with discus, but a lot of people say not to because the angels carry some diseases that are sometimes could be fatal to the discus, but not to the angels. Got some nice serpe touches there. More nice angel fish here. A little mixture of bodies and stuff like that here. You look at those angel fish. Angel fish are just, angels and discus are the coolest of the kind of mellow fish. They're cichlids, but they're not like the aggressive, humongous growing ones that, you know, most people would consider the monster fish. But they're, they're fun. They're definitely fun. We got some banios up here. These are probably the number one star of fish people get. They're, you know, they're annoying fish. They, they, they kind of can be nippers, fin nippers, and annoyers. But it's amazing that these angel fish are not being bothered, probably because they're so big. This is a really beautiful tank. Oh yeah. You can see this really big greenish size angel, along with a bunch of other greenish size angels in here. It's a nice rainbow fish. Look down, there's some albino quarry cats down there. Nice, it's not really a planted tank more so. Some of it's planted, but some of them are for sale, obviously, the plants in there. And there's some albino quarries swimming around. Yeah, I think they always look good mixed into a tank like this and add some color. There's some Rosaline sharks. Love those, which are not really sharks, they're kind of tetras, but they get along well with discus fish and angel fish, so a lot of people keep them together. You know, they add a little color, they add movement to the water. Just, you know, angels and discus don't move around very quickly. So if you want to get some movement in your tank, rose lines are nice. You get some tetras in there. A little school of neon tetras in the back. And this is a very cool tank. Let me step back so you can get a good view of what it's looked like. It's like a bow front tank. And this is always a nice tank to have in the store. You know, it's kind of like a display tank. But the stuff in here is for sale. This is like matted grass. If you ever want to put that in like a guppy tank or so the live bears can kind of hide in there. Oh, look at that guy in the back. Some interesting fish right there. To be honest with you, I don't even know what it is, although I just see a snail right there. I'm around the front, get a better view of them. There's a discus in the back. So if you look hard enough on this tank, you'll find a lot of stuff. You might not even know it's in here. Some more angel fish here. Nice colored ones, some marbled angels. Some painted tetras here. 
Got some platies, some panda platies. Very nice pattern on those. And they look like little panda bears, I guess you could say. That's why they call them that. We got the high fins mollies here. These require a little bit of salt in the water. They seem to be healthier and they live better with a little bit of salt. They can, they're kind of, can go both ways. You know, platies can actually live in saltwater tanks as well as freshwater. They have that ability to regulate, which is kind of cool. This is a really nice tank down here. Get some more bigger angels here, more variety with the painted glow tetras. These are actually just, uh, these are actually not painted. These are actually, they change the genes in them so they express different fluorescence colors. Really kind of cool, you know. Who would have thought when I was a kid they would have fish that look like this? This is almost like, it looks like it's from another planet. Look at that. Look at those pinks. And look at that green. Greens are amazing. Glow Tetras. And the price came down quite a bit. When these first came out, they were like 30 bucks a piece. Now they're like $8. And it's still high for a small fish like that. But look at the color. We're going to get color like that. Unbelievable. And we'll finish up. Oh, let's go up here first. Some silver dollars. They kind of look like pakus a little bit. Really like those. You got your Dallas sharks up there. Of course, they're not real sharks. They look like sharks. They're fresh water. And you got some more Provences. We saw those earlier. Some really nice big size angels there. These probably can breed, I bet you, right now at this size that they're at. And we'll come down to the final tank here in the freshwater section. That's all I'm interested in, really, at this point. You got some really cool, like, pond goldfish here. You have a couple of uh, arandas in there, which are kind of cool. These seem to be very popular nowadays. I never really got into the goldfish too much. You never know. You can always get bit by the bug. You've got some koi in here, obviously, that can go into ponds. Some of these are already nice, pretty nice. Yeah, you know, this this fish in the back is called a shabunkin, but it's really just a big fan of goldfish, I think, pretty much. The, they just kind of start breeding. I always liked them. I always liked the big white fish with the big sandtail on the back. Looks beautiful. And goldfish, you know, are great. If you're into goldfish, man, you can really do a lot with them. The colors that they come out with nowadays are just amazing. They don't require heat. You know, here in Florida, you can pretty much, you know, never have to worry about the temperature of these things. You never need a heater on them. And, you know, it just depends what you're looking for. You're looking to do a pond, you're looking to do a, a you know, freshwater tropical tank. You got to decide what you like, you know, but looking at all these fish today, I'm getting excited again, possibly getting a, another fish tank or maybe a couple. Uh, we'll have to see. I have a feeling at this point I'm not going to go small, I'm going to go big. I see there's a lot of tanks available on like uh, Cape Coral uh, buy and trade on Facebook. Probably get a pretty good deal on one. Maybe set one up in my snake room and I uh, get some monster fish going because I know you guys like to see them, you like to see me feed them and, and talk about them. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to try to do a lot more of these now. I know you guys have missed my videos. I've been out of action for a year, but uh, we're back. Palumbo's Muscle Fish. Stay tuned. If you like the channel, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, leave comments in the uh, comments section below.